Hey there, everybody. P. Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of Ranking the Albums. Today, we're going to take a look at the solo catalog. I know this is a long time coming, folks. The solo catalog of the voice of rock himself, Mr. Glenn Hughes. Yes, just the solo albums. We're not including Hughes' thrall. We're not including his albums he did with Tony Iommi. We're not including the stuff he did with Joe Lynn Turner or Dario Mola or any of that stuff because Glenn's got a million collaborations and things like that. These are just the Glenn Hughes solo albums. All right, there are 13 of them, right? There's 13. Yeah, 13 of them, not including the Christmas album. He did like a holiday-themed album. We're not going to do that one. But all the other ones are up for grabs, and I have all of them except for, I believe, two on actual CD. So uh, I'm gonna go on my order of preference, starting from 13, go all the way up to number one. All right, let me make sure I do have 13 here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Maybe there's only one that I don't have. Yeah, not quite, nah, whatever, we'll, we'll figure it out. I, I think maybe it's just one that I don't have a hard copy of. So uh, anyway, like I said, I'm gonna start at number 13. I'm gonna work my way back. We're going to kick it off with the one that I don't have a hard copy of. From 2006, his 11th studio album. It is called Music for the Divine. I do want to preface before we get into the ranking. So if you've never really listened to the solo catalog of Glenn Hughes, but you know him from Black Sabbath, Deep Purple, Black Country Communion, and so on and so forth, uh, musically, most of these albums <clears throat> kind of bridge this gap between like hard rock, bluesy hard rock, funk, and soul. It's kind of like this weird mix of things across most of the albums. Not too many deviate from that kind of formula. Um, and most of the albums are pretty lengthy, like lots of songs, 10, 11, 12, 13 songs, you know, hour plus worth of music for the most part. Uh, but he sounds spectacular on all of them. And one thing I think we're going to get to while we're talking about this is just how strong his vocals have gotten over the years right you would think a guy his age right as he gets older the voice wears a little thin eh, not glenn hughes and even considering all the, the 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 crazy lifestyle he led for so many years starting when he was in deep purple you know um you know of course was in trapeze originally joined deep purple developed a serious cocaine addiction which uh you know continued on for well over a decade lucky he, the man is still alive but he got sober right around the beginning of the 90s and he's just his voice has gotten stronger ever since right so uh go figure i, I think maybe in his uh instance probably because he was not doing a lot of touring throughout the 80s due to sporadic working uh the drug habit you know whatnot uh maybe he's just that gave him 10 extra years with the voice maybe i don't know because a guy who's like 70 years old probably should not still be singing like this, but he sounds amazing. So pretty crazy right, when you think about it. Anyway, number 13, Music for the Divine is 11th album. So I'm going to also kind of fill you in on kind of who plays on some of these albums. So J.J. Marsh, uh, his longtime guitar player, uh, playing guitars on this one. He also helps write a lot of the songs as well. You got John Frusciante from Red Hot Chili Peppers shows up on a couple tracks on here. You got Chad Smith on drums, Mark Killian on keyboards. Uh, so on this album, you got the uh, really good atmospheric rocker, The Valiant Denial, which opens up. It's probably my favorite song on the album, or one of them anyway. Really, really good track. Um, and I, I really like Chad Smith's drumming on all these albums that he appears on. He appears on a few albums uh, with Glenn Hughes and adds a really nice element uh, to the arrangements and whatnot. And the way the drums are recorded just sound really, really good. Uh, you got the groovy, funky, hard rocker Stepping On, which is another good one. You got Monkey Man, which is fiery, heavy. You got uh, the kind of laid-back funk of uh, You Got Soul, which is a killer, killer vocal from Glenn. You know, I don't know how much it needs to be said, but Glenn's vocals on all these albums are really, really great. Uh, you got the big groove monster, Black Light. You got a kind of a weird cover of the Moody Blues classic, Nights in White Satin. I'm not so sure if the more soulful approach to that song really works, right? Or not? I don't know. It's kind of interesting. I'm just kind of like, hmm... I love Glenn. I'm just, you know, trying to sing that song. I just don't know if it makes a lot of sense. But, hey, it's, in it's an interesting listen nonetheless. Uh, you have just some amazing killer wah-wah guitar licks on the song Too High. The rest of the album doesn't really do a hell of a lot for me. There's some laid-back stuff on here, some stuff that's just kind of funky, soulful, doesn't really go anywhere. Uh, so, overall, kind of a patchy album. You know, what's good is really good, but I would say, like, half the album I really like. The other half, I don't really care too much for. So, that's number 13, Music for the Divine, from 2006. Uh, for number 12, 
I'm going to go with his 12th studio, 12th studio album from 2008, First Underground Nuclear Kitchen. All right. Again, J.J. Marsh on board on guitars. You also got a guy named George Nastos, as well as Luis Carlos Maldonado, who actually co-writes a lot of the songs on here. Chad Smith's on drum once again, drumming on once again. Uh, Anders Olinder and Ed Roth on keyboards. Uh, it starts off with a song called Crave, which is a real nice groove-laden funk rocker. Um, again, I think Chad's drumming works so well with Glenn on these albums, again, because coming from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, right, a lot of funkiness going on in those songs, so I think he's a really good choice when Glenn is choosing to play this type of material. Uh, but yeah, also, uh, you know, lots of blazing lead guitars on this. Uh, you know, they got the title track is another really good one, really funky. Uh, you got Satellite, a little more breezy, soulful. Then you got Love Communion, also kind of breezy, croony, soulful. Um, you got kind of crunchy funk, the crunch funk, right, of uh, We Shall Be Free. Uh, then you got Imperfection, that's another kind of soulful, kind of crooner type song. Uh, you got the absolutely groovalicious, heavy funk rocker, Never Say Never, which is a total blast. That's, again, one of the best songs on the album. Uh, you got the real deep funk, almost like funkadelic parliament type of uh, song, We Go to War. Uh, you got the real moody, Too Late to Save the World, which uh, is fairly late in the album. Pretty cool song. Uh, again, kind of a spotty album. I think what works really works. What doesn't is just kind of like, nah, it's okay. Um, and I think by this point, you know, this was 2008, you have to wonder this whole kind of funk rock thing is kind of maybe wearing a little thin, right? It's almost like Glenn is like just trying, it's like, well, I really like funk music, but, you know, how much more new can I say with this formula type of thing? But what's good on here is really good. Uh, I don't mind that the, I like the heavy rock stuff that has a little funk edge. I quite like that. Um, but overall, not a terrible album. None of these albums suck at all. All right, they're, they're just, some are just better than others. All right, so we're going to go to number 11. We're going to go to his sixth album. This is from 1999, The Way It Is. Glenn with the short haircut right there. He's got the glasses on the back. Let me just come out on. This was on uh, Shrapnel Records. Yeah, it's not Shrapnel Records. And I think there's another cover that has kind of this on the front, right? It's kind of reversed or something similar to that. So, uh, yeah. So, J.J. Marsh on guitars, Mark Bonilla on guitars. Mark Bonilla, of course, played with Keith Emerson quite a bit. He plays guitar and keyboards on this album. Uh, Stevie Salas plays on a couple tracks. Gary Ferguson on drums. Keith Emerson himself also plays uh, Hammond organ on two songs. I like the opening title track. <clears throat> it's pretty mellow, but it's nice and atmospheric. Good hooks on the chorus, I like that. Uh, you Kill Me is a real fun slice of kind of like funky hard rock blazing Stevie Salas guitars. I love Stevie's great guitar player. Uh, he also appears on the funky Second Son, right? The two tracks that Stevie plays on, no surprise, they're really, really kind of funky. Um, let's see, what else we got here? Uh, you got Never After, which is kind of big and crunchy, riffy. You got the crisp, funky rocker Rain On Me, one of my favorite tracks on here, also a nice chorus. Uh, really good Glenn Hughes vocal on that one. Nice groove in the song. Uh, you get Curse. That's, again, another one of these kind of breezy, kind of pop soul pieces. That's okay. Uh, you got a real spirited cover of Jimi Hendrix's uh, Freedom, which works really well. Uh, you get the Hard Rock and the Truth Will Set Me Free. And Stone in the Temple is another good hard rocker. Uh, Take You Down is kind of jazzy. Right? It's kind of interesting. And then you get kind of like gospel-y tones on Don't Look Away. Again, another kind of hit-or-miss album. Some of these, the, the ones down on the bottom of my list, are, are like that. They have some really good material, and some, it's just, you know, he was pumping out albums left and right around this time. Uh, you know, lots of variety on here. You know, for some people, it's going to be stylistically just all over the place. You know, you got some heavy songs, some funky songs, some kind of R&B, gospel songs, right? But, you know... Performances are top notch. The vocals off the charts, great as always, from Mr. Hughes because I can't expect anything else but that, right? All right, so here we're gonna go to number ten. I'm gonna go uh, to 1993, his second solo album. So there's a huge gap between solo records here from the first and the second. All right, the first came out in the late 70s. Didn't release another solo album till the early 90s. And again, that just goes to show you kind of what was going on 
you know, in his life, you know, he had stints with Gary Moore and Hughes Thrall and Black Sabbath and none of that stuff really ever worked out for him. But anyway, this is called uh, Blues, L.A. Blues Authority Volume 2, Glenn Hughes Blues. So this was a uh, another one of those uh, kind of like shrapnel things where they did uh, various uh, L.A. Blues Authority releases with different cast members and whatnot. And this one they gave to Glenn Hughes to basically just pick out, handpick his, uh, his folks to do the album and... Uh, So, this apparently hits right after he kicks his drug addiction, okay? Uh, and like I said, recorded for Shopman Records. Uh, features all original material, so no covers, which is kind of interesting. Written by Glenn, uh, along with guitarist Craig Eckerson, or Erickson, not Eckerson, Craig Erickson. Um, <coughs> other folks appearing on lead guitar, including John Norum, Warren Martini, Mark Kendall from Great White, Richie Kotzen, Darren Hausfolder, Paul Pesco, and Mick Mars. From Motley Crue. So a good cast of people playing on this one. You get uh, Tony Franklin on bass, Gary Ferguson on drums, he had a long association with Glenn, Mark Jordan on keyboards. You know, most of this is kind of heavy, blues, rock, kind of cactusy type of thing. You know, bad company free, that sort of thing. Uh, for me, the highlights include uh, the smoldering, the boy can sing the blues, which is really good. You get the funky, bluesy rock of um, the man. Uh, here comes the rebel sizzling white hot blues like that quite a bit. Uh, you get the groovy scorcher shake the ground. Uh, Have you read the book is another really good one. I think Glenn sounds great on this album. Uh, he's newly sober, newfound faith too. He discovered God in this time period as well. Uh, you know the problem here is some of the songs are kind of like generic by the numbers blues rock tunes, right? But the ones that are good are really good, and the performances all around are, is really strong. The guitar soloing is as excellent as you can imagine by this cast. So. Uh, Blues comes in at number 10. All right, coming in at number nine, we're going to go to uh, the fifth album from 1996, Addiction. Okay, he's, he's looking like he's struggling with something here, right? So, uh, again, Glenn returns to mostly hard rock on this one. It's kind of a dark album, dealing with a lot of the serious issues going on in his life, his fight to stay sober from his addictions. I, I think, if I remember correctly in his book, I think he... Uh, fell off the wagon at some point right around this time. So this was 1996. So I think uh, in like 94, 95, he briefly fell off the wagon, if I remember correctly. Um, but he's also kind of looking back on his life over the last like decade plus here. Uh, so you got Mark Bonilla and J.J. Marsh playing all the guitars. Joe Travers on drums on this one. You got Death of Me, great driving opener. Glenn's voice is in fine form here. Uh, you got Down is kind of like a mid-paced, crunchy rocker. The title track is Angry, some big, heavy riffing all throughout that one. You got Madeline, crushes, tons of groove, metallic riffs, roaring lead vocal. Perhaps my favorite song on here, Madeline. Really, really good. Uh, you got the moody, bluesy pop of Talk About It. You got the groove, I'm Not Your Slave. Tons of groove on that particular one. Uh, you got the big trapeze style heavy rock of Cover Me. It's another really good track on here. The lengthy atmospheric blues rocker, Blue Jade. Um, you know, on the downside, a few tracks kind of plot a little bit maybe a little too moody but it kind of you know the whole feel of the album is is like that uh but overall some really good ones here i think it was a pretty solid record and again this one came out on shrapnel records uh, here in the states so yeah addiction number nine all right moving on to number eight i almost felt like this should have gone higher but i'm gonna go with his fourth album from 1995 feel look at him with the long hair man he's looking like got, got the mane going there this is that so uh this is mostly pop funk and soul but i think it really works uh and it does rock in spots too uh you got big time is fairly rocking rousing glenn hughes vocal on that one and tasty guitar licks from pat thrall who appears on a bunch of tunes on this album it's really good to hear pat and and glenn hooking up again i i really like the hughes thrall album i always thought it could have been a little better and I'm, I've always been, I felt like, man, if they would have done a second album, I think that would have been really, really great. This is kind of like their de facto second album. But, you know, they were both such a mess at the time, so it's not surprising that that was kind of like a one and done. Um, what else we got here? Uh, Lively and Soulful Living for a Minute is really good. You get the deep funk of Redline. Push is another funky rocker. Got a lot of cool riffs and big grooves. I mean, man, this could be like a Sly in the Family Stone tune. Really, really good. Uh, you got absolutely pure funk of She Loves Your Money. Uh, you got the big riff rocker, Talking to Messiah, which might be my favorite song in here. It's got a great chorus. Love that. Uh, you get a fun cover of Stevie Wonder's Maybe Your Baby. Total funk fest there. Uh, I think this is a really fun album. 
a lot of variety on it. Uh, and I love hearing Path Thrall um, adding some great guitar work here. Yeah, I, I keep thinking this should be higher, but I don't know. I'm going to leave it where it is for now. But I, my, my, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking this could be two or three higher, but whatever. All right, next up, we're going to go to his very, very first solo album from 1977. So this comes, you know, a little, little bit after he leaves, uh, after Deep Purple implodes. So it's, what, two years, two years after the, two years, what was it, 75? Yeah, I think it was late 75. That the Come Taste the Band Mark IV uh, era of Deep Purple kind of split, and Tommy Bolin, you know, dies in what early '76, and so yeah, so it's a little while after that. But Glenn is pretty much mired in his his addictions at this point. But this is a soul and funk saturated piece of music here. Um, you know, big difference from what he was doing with both Deep Purple and Trapeze. This sounds nothing like either of those bands, right? If you kind of, if you kind of like the 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 funky. Deep Purple Mark Three and Four. This is not even like that, right? This is loads of horns, loads of clavinet on here. Uh, Glenn is just crooning up a storm. He's got the pump and bass going throughout the whole thing. He even plays a little bit of guitar. Uh, he plays Fender Rhodes, ARP String Ensemble, Mini Moog, other keyboards, and you got guitars from uh, Mel Galley plays a good chunk of the guitars on this album. Of course, Mel Galley from Trapeze. Pat Travers plays a little bit on here. Bob Bowman's on here. Dave Holland from Trapeze, and later on Judas Priest also plays uh, drums on the album. Host of other players, uh, but some the songs are really strong. I mean, I really like. I got it covered as a rock and funk machine. Love that. Space F High has some cool wah wah guitars on it. It's got the ARP string ensemble. Kind of sounds like Mellotron a little bit. Pretty cool. The ARP again featured on uh, the Blush. It's about time. You got uh, L.A. Cutoff, which has tons of horns sounds you know kind of like a funky chicago or you know anything like that really really cool uh solution is another song right in that same mold like that quite a bit uh, and then you have the reissue which has all sorts of other bonus tracks which are really really great like destiny is really cool uh smile is a really cool kind of moton flavored song uh get near to you another really good one i don't know i mean nothing r remotely overly rocks on this album but it doesn't matter it's really well done soul, soulful funk and r&b and you can tell that glenn had a blast doing this so uh, you know we've always heard that this kind of music is near and dear to his heart it's just a shame he never really went full bore into anything like this um, ever again but this is really good i know some people don't like this because it's just a little too mellow a little too soulful and funky but i think it works really really well the songs are really good that's the important thing all right <clears throat> number six we're gonna go to 1994 is third album from now on. So Glenn, this this comes uh, you know hot on the heels of the the blues album, and here Glenn is newly sober. All right, he sounds pretty energized here. All right, uh, he's but this is a little bit of a different album. This is kind of like almost like a melodic rock album, like an AOR album, right? So he's got a whole cast of Swedish musicians on this album. Um, and ironically, he does not play bass on this album. He plays bass on all the other albums, does not play any bass on here. He has a good chunk of the band Europe playing on this album, right? Because Europe at this point in time, were kind of they were also kind of in flux. So they join him for this album. Not everybody, most of the guys. Uh, I mean, yeah, like I said, this is a collection of up-tempo, melodic, hard rock songs. Picking up the pieces, memorable, quite rocking. Uh, Lay My Body Down is a gritty blues rocker that's not unlike a uh, latter period... Um, you know, or much later, I should later, later period of uh, Black Country Communion, right? The only one, love that song, great chorus, uh, hook laden AOR melodic rock, really, really good stuff. You get the bluesy ballad, Why Don't You Stay, uh, has a killer chorus. You get the hard rocker, The Liar, which I always really like. It's got some nasty guitar licks from uh, Eric Boyfelt, I think that's how he says his name. You got the moody Into the Void, another one of my favorite songs on here. That sounds like it could have come off the Hughes Thrall album. Um, really, really good stuff. And uh, what else we got here? Catchy AOR of You Were Always There. Devil and You's got a funky hard rock feel. Sounds a little bit like Toto. Uh, you get um, From Now On, another good soaring melodic track. You know, overall, this is a strong album. Lots of memorable songs on here. And I think uh, Glenn's voice is really really on point throughout the album he just sounds like just supercharged and ready to continue on with not only his career but his life so from now on number six number five we're gonna go to his eighth album from 2001 building the machine never liked this cover this strange depiction of him on the cover um 
wearing this weird long brown jacket and the short hair and I think they should have done something like that on the cover. I don't know, whatever. Um, anyway, this is a pretty strong album. J.J. Mars on guitars, Marsh on guitars once again, Gary Ferguson on drums, a bunch of guest stars on backing vocals and keyboards and things like that. You got uh, Can't Stop the Flood, killer heavy rock song. Really, he always gets these great openers. That's a really good one. Great chorus. Um, you got the groove-laden hard rock of Inside, Out on Me is kind of rootsy, almost southern rockish in spots, kind of slide guitars and things like that. I kind of dig that. You got a fiery take on Rare Earths, I Just Want to Celebrate, which is loads of fun. Uh, you get the gritty rocker, Don't Let It Slip Away. You got uh, acoustic, bluesy, Feels Like Home. You get a redo of Deep Purple's uh, Highball Shooter, which is well done, of course. Why would it not be? And you get the heavy uh, When You Fall. I think for me, uh, this album is kind of front-loaded. The last like three tracks, I Will Follow You Beyond the Numb and Big Sky, kind of really mellow just kind of loses steam for the whole first like three quarters of it just just one banger after another for the most part but uh overall though pretty solid album like i said the, the front you know half a little more than half is really really strong right and some of you might even like the metal tracks they don't do a hell of a lot for me but overall really really good album there number four we're going to go to his seventh album from 2000 the return of crystal karma this is the limited edition Got all sorts of extra stuff on here. Um, J.J. Marsh on guitars. Gary Ferguson once again on drums. Hans Zurmelhen on keyboards. Lal Tolhurst on electronics and electronica. I wish he would have stayed off the album. I think that this this would have ranked even higher if I think if it wasn't for the weird little electronic thingamajiggy things going on throughout some of these songs, right? But overall, some really great tracks on here. The State I'm In. Dramatic rocker, really like that quite a bit. Uh, you get Funk and Metal Collide on Midnight Meditated, really good song. It's All Right, another funky one. Uh, you get Switch the Mojo, which just has monster, monster grooves, right? And it's got lots of weight to it. It's just big and, you know, big and groovy, kind of heavy. You get the Doom Laden Rocker Gone, G O N E, which is easily my favorite song on here. It's massive. Oh my God, so heavy. Uh, you get Deep Purple meets Funk on the Hammond organ drench, The Other Side of Me. Really, really cool song. Love the Hammond organ on that. Uh, Ode to J is a killer instrumental fusion track. It's like five and a half minutes long. It's got great keys and guitars and bass and drums and the whole nine yards. A homage to Jeff Beck, perhaps? I'm not quite sure. It sounds like something like that will come off of like uh, There and Back or uh, Wired or something like that. Very, very cool song. Uh, you get the Moody Rocker Days of Avalon. It has a wonderful soulful vo vocal from Glenn. I think it's a really strong album. Again, take away the weird electronica shit that's going on in a few songs, and I think this is just dynamite stuff. Uh, really, really good. That's number four. Coming in at number three, we're going to go with Soul Movers, 10th album from 2005. Again, J.J. Marsh, George Nastos on guitar, Chad Smith once again on drums, Ed Roth on keyboards. Opening title track, a groove-laden hard rock belter. Love it. Soul Mover is killer. Uh, love the heavy wah-wah riffing, man. Just so good. So good. You get the fast-paced rocker, She Moves Ghostly. You get the slow, heavy, kind of funky high road. Uh, they have this kind of like Led Zeppelin-y feel on the song Orion. You get the atmospheric change yourself. You get the slow and simmering build to the dramatic Let It Go, which has a just vengeful vocal from Glenn. Just awesome stuff. You get uh, complex funk of Dark Star. You get funk meets boisterous heavy rock on Isolation. You get lots of melody on the hard rocker Land of the Living. Really not crazy about the quirky Little Miss Insane. I don't really like his vocal on that one. I don't really like the crooning Last Mistake or the mellow blues of Don't Let Me Bleed. But again, you know, the back end falters just a little bit. But man, otherwise everything else is just absolutely outstanding. I think, you know, he's got a couple albums in this catalog that like kind of just lose steam at the, at the back end of it. It's like, you know what, just crop those tunes off and you've got a total cranker of an album. But yeah, Soul Mover, 10th album from 2005. That's my number three. Number two, <clears throat> we're going to go with the uh, songs in the key of rock. R-O-C-K. Big rock. J.J. Marsh, Jeff Coleman on guitars, Gary Ferguson, Chad Smith on drums, Ed Roth on keyboards, In My Blood, Smoldering Heavy Rocker. 
I mean, Glenn is just wailing on the vocals on this. Nice use of Hammond organ to go along with some really crunchy riffing. Great, great track. Lost in the Zone, crisp, hard rocker. Love it. You got the fast and fiery gasoline. You got the Led Zeppelin influence and obviously homage to the drummer. Higher Places slash Song for Bonzo. A total Zeppelin tribute right there. Really, really cool. You get the funk rock of Get You Stoned, which has uh, Billy Sheehan guest uh, bass on that particular one. You get the real soulful written all over your face. Good song. Did it need to be eight minutes long, though? I don't know. Uh, it's got a really nice long guitar solo, though, on it. Uh, Frantic Standing on the Rock. Really, really good stuff. Killer riffing on that song. You get the funky hard rock of Secret Life, which, again, has some really cool Wild Wild Licks. Um, I love the truth, catchy, catchy track, and then the driving rocker wherever you go is another really strong, strong track on this one. Uh, yeah, outstanding album would be my number one if it wasn't for my number one, which is ironically enough, for those of you who are fans, you've probably been waiting for this one. Uh, his most recent album, Resonate from 2016, first in eight years, right? This is the first new studio album in eight years uh, from Glenn, because of course he was busy with Black Country Communion and, and other things, but uh, this is 13th album and last one since, right? So it's been, geez, seven years already. Uh, you got Soren Anderson on guitar on this one. You got uh, Pontus Eggboard, Chad Smith also on drums. Pontus Eggboard and Chad Smith on drums. You got uh, Lacey Doley on keyboards. Uh, really, really good album. This is on Frontiers Records. You get the... Uh, Song Heavy, which kicks off the album. Big, bold, and yes, heavy, with a slight funk feel in the groove. Uh, My Town, another memorable rocker. You got the monster, doom-laden riffs of Flow. Absolutely killer song. Flow is so good. Uh, what else you got? Let It Shine, another crushing hard rocker, but really nice melodic chorus. You get the Deep Purple Influence Steady, which has some cool Hammond organ and guitar passages, really nice stuff there. The Heavy and Brooding God of Money, you get more Hammond and guitar riffing on How Long. You get the atmospheric bluesy rocker Stumble and Go, and then the hook-laden rocker Long Time Gone which is uh, another Deep Purple sounding piece. Really good chorus, really, really memorable. Uh, I, I think it's like crazy to think of how like his most recent album at his, you know, this again, this is seven years ago, so he's probably in his what mid sixties at this point, is by far his strongest. I mean, it's not even close. The voice of rock is back in a big way. He's better than ever, like a fine wine. He just ages so gracefully. And like I said, there is, even though Songs in the Key of Rock, I really like a lot, there's a big gulf between those two. I mean, it's not even close how much better this is than anything else in this catalog, but there's really good stuff in the catalog. So I don't want to uh, undervalue the catalog of Glenn Hughes because it's really, really strong. So uh, so yeah, so there you have it. That's my ranking. Um, Let's read them all back to you. So number one, Resonate. Number two, Songs in the Key of Rock. Number three, Soul Mover. Number four, Return of Crystal Karma. Number five, Building the Machine. Number six, From Now On. Number seven, Play Me Out. Number eight, Feel. Number nine, Addiction. Number 10, Blues, LA Blues Authority Volume 2. Number 11, The Way It Is. Number 12, First Underground Nuclear Kitchen. And number 13, Music for the Divine. That's my ranking. If you are a fan, rank them in the order you like them down in the comments below. And if you've uh, never taken the plunge into Glenn Hughes' solo discography, well, now you got some places that you can go and get your head started, in, right? So I would de I would definitely say any of the top five are really worthy, but this this most of them are, are really strong or you know at least pretty solid. So there's real no bad album here. Um, so there you go. Thanks for watching, everybody. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, all together, all the damn time. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and click on that notification bell so you get alert of all of our content as it posts. And please do hit the like button before you leave. Also down below, we get the links to our Ko-Fi page for channel donations as well as our merch page. And thanks in advance for all that. And uh, happy Mother's Day to everybody once again. And uh, we'll see you real soon here with more stuff coming up. We've got uh, Tuesday in the prog seat. We're going to do an album study on Jethro Tull's A Passion Play. So that's coming up in just a couple days. So thanks for watching, everybody. I am Pete Parlo. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye-bye.